Hello and welcome to another Overlord Law video and today we are going to take a look at what happened to the elves that Arya Usruf, one of the workers that entered the great tomb, but wasn't able or allowed to leave, had brought with him, and what could happen to them in the 15th volume. But before we are going to do so, let me thank my patrons for supporting this channel, as well as all users of the YouTube thanks function who made one-time donations. Now with that said, we need to take a look at how Arya even acquired the elves in the first place, in order to understand where I'm going with this video. And Arya Usruf is rumored to be from the Theocracy of Slain, a humanocentric state that is currently engaged in a drawn out war that by now should have been fought for like 100 years plus with the elven kingdom. And the king of the elves had started a war with Slain by taking the strongest godkin of the theocracy for himself, which as you might have imagined caused a declaration of war by the zealots. The product of this union was Zeshi, the half-elf godkin, and while she is even more powerful than any of the other godkins, and is even akin to the overlord of the new world due to her strength and talent, she thus far hasn't had the opportunity to fight. Because as the child of a player, Platinum might intervene on the side of the Elven King if Zeshi gets deployed against the Elf Kingdom, simply because he doesn't like it if the Godkins, and therefore by proxy players, destroy vast parts of the new world. And like the Theocracy itself, Zeshi is obsessed with strength, so much so that she would literally have a child with anyone stronger than her, due to the threat of Platinum on one hand and the dangerous forest on the other, in which the Elven Kingdom is situated, thus far the war had been waged on a very low intensity by small elite units, which piece by piece were destroying the Elf Kingdom and it is currently teetering on the edge of utmost defeat. And in order to finance the war, the slain theocracy has enslaved the captured Elf and sold them off. And Arya Usrud, who is even rumored to be from the slain theocracy, but who then would have dropped his middle name or his Baptist name, bought them on a regular basis for his team. And this team was, aside from the elves, exclusively made up of himself and himself alone. He was a passionate battle maniac who fought himself to be stronger than even Gazav Stronov or Brain Anglaus, and he believed that might makes right. The elves in his team merely served as healers, scouts, magic support and buff units, as well as caneries and living trap detection. And they furthermore were treated exceptionally poorly, they were only clothed in rags, they were beaten and battered against their will, as a sign of subjugation their ears were mutilated. And even though they were expensive, due to areas income as a worker, they were still just replaceable commodities in the eyes of Arya. As you can imagine, this doesn't inspire loyalty, and once Arya met her muscle and lost his arms, the elves were not inclined to buff or heal him anymore. And after Muske used a slight or rather harsh head pad, Arya died, and the elves kicked his body as a sign of disrespect and then remained in place. They neither made an attempt to retreat nor did they advance or started a fight, despite them being quite powerful magic casters. And while Eins felt nothing but disgust for the workers who invaded and soiled his tomb for the sake of money, the elves technically didn't invade or even enter the tomb, they were just brought along against their will. And since they remained passive after Arya died, Eins had another plan for them. On the sixth floor, there was already a sizable amount of outsiders, from dryads to lizardmen, all living in harmony, and Eins reasoned that it would greatly benefit Aura and Mare to be among other elves. That's why Eins made the elves attend Aura and Mare, as their personal mates, so to speak. And at least in the web novel, and also likely in the light novel and off screen in the anime, their health had been restored, and their cut ears healed by Pestonia. And while this all is well and good, the freed slaves 
would likely believe that the Dark Elf Twins, or in fact they do believe, that due to their immense strength, their dominion over the sixth and biggest floor, and mainly because of their heterochromia, the two different colored eyes, thought of Aura and Mare as royalties. For heterochromia is a sign of royal blood within their own society. And here we're going to skip all the way to the 15th flight novel, which will have above 700 pages, and which will play out in the Elven Kingdom. And no, we still don't have a release date yet. And at the end of the 14th novel, Eins felt that he earned and needed a vacation, and therefore he will take Aura and Mare to the Elf Kingdom with him. And it is very likely that he will also bring the freed elves with him to act as guides and to offer insight into their realm. And the Elf King also looks for a worthy match to Sire's strong offspring. So if two overpowered Dark Elves show up, the Elf King will make something incredibly stupid and then likely experience something incredibly painful. And while Einstein and the Twin Floor Guardians will make a unplanned stop in the Dominion of Newness Painkill to deliver some certain king. The slain theocracy might recapture the elves that attended Aura and Mare, unaware that they are now under the protection of Eins Olgon's very own name. And this would be a big deal. The last time someone had tried to enslave someone under Eins Olgon's protection, the Eight Fingers experienced a fate many times worse than death. And judging from the fact that Sebastian has experience in this department, considering it was he who saved Tuara again, Eins might also deploy him against the slain Theocracy. At this point the Theocracy would and needed to deploy Zeshi, who, due to her fetish for strength, will likely switch sides. And all of this player action would also lead to Platinum joining the fight, even if it is just to check out Sebas, who is a Dragonoid. Or alternatively, he might just sit back, eat some popcorn, and enjoy the show. This is at least in my theory what will happen to them. And now it's your turn. What are your theories and ideas about all of this? Let me know down in the comment section. Furthermore, this, as you might have noticed, was a remake of one of my very first Overlord videos. And since I had some more ideas how the elves could affect the story in the 15th flight novel, I remade it. And with that said, I say thank you very much for watching and special thanks to Dash 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 Bad Guy Ye Ben C Chrissy Crowley 0221 Sia Death is Mercy Deathless Dragonlord Dystopia Dystopia the Second Feral Shivan Guy with that head Hector Marino, Hoss, Huster, Jacob G, Jana B, Jason, Chromius, Legendarius, Lelouch Ribetania with a mustache, Lexus Fox, Lord Nishikian Rai, Lord Touch Me, Merovec, Mr. Shoes, Mr. Tweaker, Michael R, Michael Y, O-Kill, Overlord General Gasper, Paddy Pantom, Pass Sonage, Primus Eleven, Shadow Lightning Wolf, Shrine Keeper, Texas Deer, The Orc Warboss, Rocket Smasher, T.E. Vang, The Shorkai, Vegito 27, Venture Fanatic, Wilhelm, and Zonagon. Thanks guys. Anyway, have a nice day and I hope to see you all again soon on my next video.